What's good football fans? Back at you once again with another video. And today I wanted to come in and look at some film on a guy that I think that, uh, you know, Washington's going to have to make a decision on here pretty soon. And it's at a position that a lot of people think that this team needs to improve at. But Kalik Hudson is a guy who has put in work on special teams over the last three seasons. Now last year, the team was decimated at the linebacker position in the final week of the season, and they finally let Hudson get his first career start at linebacker. And I wanted to dive right into this film, and you know, there's not much of it since uh, this is the first time that Rivera is actually letting this kid shine. But the very first thing I notice about this kid is he seems a bit light in the ass, if you know what I mean. Now at six foot even and 220 pounds, He's about the same height and just a few pounds heavier than Landon Collins, okay? Which puts him in that, you know, versatile tweener category, you know, kind of in between safety and linebacker, kind of AKA like Mark Barron or Dayon Buchanan. In fact, almost the same size as both of those and, and, uh, and damn near the same speed. Well, one thing you have to keep in your, in your brain um, in comparison to those who play next to Hudson, David Mayo is six foot two and 240 pounds. Jamin Davis isn't on the field in this film, but he's six foot four and 232 pounds. And Hudson's size or, or lack thereof leads me to his main flaw, which is my fear of him getting manhandled by you know offensive linemen. And to be quite honest, that's a problem with a lot of these versatile tweener types. And of course, there's also two ways of looking at it. He's also fast as hell, and um, he's got some pretty good hands and some pretty good balance. Not to mention, he's got a nonstop motor, uh, even on plays that he's not involved in. Now, one thing that I noticed that I really liked was that he could tackle and cover in space, which makes him an outside candidate for that Buffalo nickel spot that Landon Collins was playing back in 2021. Now keep in mind that his first career start was in this game right here in week 18 against the Dallas Cowboys. And he had seven combined tackles that day. And if you watch this play right here, it's kind of like a, a small combination of the two comments I just made. Because even though he lacks the physical size to be able to push his way through the line, he still makes it a point to not stop. And I mean, he's like the little engine that could, you know what I mean? Like he just keeps going and going. And it doesn't matter that the the, uh, the offensive lineman is standing there pushing him to the side. He continues to do what he can do, which is jump up in the air, put his hands up. Um, if you watch this replay right here from the from the from the uh, the closer angle, you'll see that he does everything he can to try to get himself in between Dak and a clean, you know, open air for Dak to be able to see the pass ahead of him and you know make the play. If you watch right here, here he is coming up the gut. And you'll see, like I said, the offensive linemen, you know, do what they need to do, but he continues to just jump around, move his hands up. I like to see that, that nonstop motor he has. It just continues on, even though the play is already going to do what it does. And here's another example of his motor again. Now, while he doesn't make the play, here he is right here. While he doesn't make the actual play, his motor does not allow him to stop, and he runs right over Chase Young. Watch. Bye! He runs, I mean, right over Chase, which I'm glad to see Chase didn't get injured on that play. That's that's nice to see that. Um, but yeah, I mean, he just runs right over Chase because the guy was trying to go in 100 miles per hour, not even staring at what direction he was heading in. Now, I like to see that type of energy and that type of go. I mean, you know, the chances are he'll probably not make that play yet at all. And, um, you know, he's still there. He's still putting the effort in. Like I said, I'm glad to see Chase didn't get hurt, but it's nice to see that for a change. We don't get that all the time from our players. Let's just go ahead and be honest. That kind of energy in the last 10 years, we haven't seen a whole lot of. It's, it's good to see that type of energy, though, with this group of guys, and hopefully that energy continues on. Here's Hudson right here, and on this play, he snips out the run, sheds a block, and gets to the tackle. As I was saying a minute ago, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he really does make what he has work well for him. Watch this play. See, shed the block, make the tackle. 
And not everybody can do that. That's not exactly, you know, simple, especially for a guy that's at 220 pounds going up against linemen that outweigh him. I'm not so certain how much that particular lineman outweighs him, though, because that's a tight end there. But he definitely does his job to, to get off of that block and make that tackle or assist in that tackle. You watch it here from the other angle. Here he is right here. Yeah, I mean, he did his job there. That's exactly what you ask of him. Here's Hudson on this play coming across, and he works through that block right there. And see that speed? I mean, he's got some serious closing speed there. Watch that speed after he gets off of that block. He closes a lot of ground there. And Tony Pollard's not a, a, a slow guy by any means, and Hudson is able to close the gap between him and, and Pollard. Watch this play again from this angle. See the speed on this kid. Once he sheds that block coming off of number 70 right here. Here he is right here. Watch he sh sheds that block. Get the speed. Okay, so he just barely misses him. Now on this play here, he, he kind of shows blitz for a second and then jumps back into coverage. And one thing that I like about Kalik Hudson a lot is his ability to be able to drop into coverage and actually appear to be, you know, another DB back there in coverage and not just be liability like David Mayo tends to be in coverage, especially against a top flight wide receiver like CeeDee Lamb. And if you watch how this play unfolds, you'll see that Hudson actually drops back into coverage and prevents this play from happening. And in the process, Dak tries to roll out but can't find the open man in the process because Hudson's still stuck to Lamb and he gets sacked. Prototypical coverage sack. Here, now watch it unfold. You'll see Hudson drop back and then immediately go get on Lamb. Great job covering there. Dak tries to go out, can't find anybody. Watch it on the other angle. You won't be able to see him, you know, dropping back in coverage, but you just saw that. You'll see Dak, though, you know, read the play and watch Dak's head. He's looking right at Hudson and Lamb over here. Watch. He, he never looks anywhere else. Oh, he did look right before he, before he turned around and ran. One thing that I like to see from this kid is... You know, I've already pointed out his size issues or what could be determined as size issues. But despite those size issues, he still can set the edge when, you know, he's in the right situation. And if you watch this play develop, you'll see he'll go to that edge and he'll be one on one with the tight end. I think it's Blake Jarwin. And he's able to push Jarwin back against the, you know, against the play. Now, obviously, our defense was able to, you know, be helped a little bit by that weak pitch. But uh, this was a hell of a play by the defense to close that edge off and force Zeke back inside, which he wasn't able to gain anything. Actually, I think he lost a couple yards there. You watch the replay right here. Yeah, I think he lost a couple yards there. Now, on this play right here, here's Hudson. Uh, I wanted to show this play because it shows his read and react you know, skills pretty well. And they're on display here. Uh, when he starts the playoff and he's kind of looking which direction he should go, and he watches Lamb and he watches Dak and reads that play perfectly. And if you watch the replay, Dak believes he's going to be able to roll out here and make a play to Lamb. But in the process, I think Dak actually read the fact that Hudson was there and closing on that play. Now, I realize that there was also a man in between over there, but uh, I mean, excuse me, on the on the on the sideline route. But if you watch that play. You'll see Hudson's the one that comes in from behind. See, here's Dak, and he's got his eye over here. Excuse me, it's not Lamb, it's Gallup. And he's got his eye immediately on him, and there's a guy on the sideline covering it. So Dak's thinking that he could just make the throw upward, like, you know, horizontal that way. And he, I think at the last second, sees Hudson. It's a good thing, too, for him, because this right here could have been Kalik Hudson's first interception of his career. And, folks, that would have been probably a pick six. Watch it when I'm talking about. Yeah, see, if he, if he threw it right there, that would have been a pick six. Hudson put himself in the perfect position. I think if he'd have let go of that, that would have been a pick. If not, it would have been a batted ball or he would have been right there to defend that at the point of contact, at the point of the ball making it there. And the speed from Hudson is, 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 really, is really big there. He's unbelievably fast, y'all. I know that his 
His 40 time was something like 4-5, four, 4-5-3, five, four, five, which doesn't seem like much. But when you get him on that field with his agility and the way that he can move side to side, man, the guy seems like he's a lot faster than that. Here's Hudson right here in the middle of your screen. And I just wanted to kind of show that he has a really good ability to be able to shed a block, get around, and make tackles, especially in the run game. And I like to see that from a guy who's undersized but it kind of also reminds me of Landon Collins and like some of the things that he's really good at Did you see that he was able to get in there and help gang tackle on that play and you know that may not look like that big of a deal but I love to see that motor continuously working and he's shifty he's all over the place with his you know he's shifting with his hips and everything he's all over the place I love to see that man like this guy doesn't stop he keeps going and like he shed that blocker like it with, with just with ease now i realize that's got a lot to do with balance and the uh the, the lineman is you know obviously not as agile as him but i love to see that again it's not really about how big of a play he made it's more about his reaction time and this guy definitely reacts i like his iq and i think that this is something that only gets better the more he sees the field and this is his first start I think this gets better as he sees the field more. And this play right here is probably the reason why the defenses will have to scheme around a player like Hudson if used properly, because his speed is a mismatch for anyone that's put right there in that situation to try to block him. Now watch how this play progresses and watch the way he goes right up the gut and damn near gets Dak. Now, Dak had to react quick there and make a bad pass. You know, he had to get rid of it. He had no choice because that was going to be a sack. In the process there, a guy with that kind of speed, he can do all kinds of things. But right there, that play had no chance of working because they couldn't get set up for it. One thing to remember, you can't teach speed. Now, those that watched this game, you know it wasn't by any means a close game so towards the end of the game they were playing a little bit a, a soft zone and, and hudson got caught up in that giving everybody five ten yard cushions so it's not really about the play here it's more so about the reaction and it's more so about the fact that he was actually able to make an open field tackle which is not an easy thing to do when you're an undersized linebacker And when you see it from this angle, you just get a better idea of, you know, how fast his reaction time is. And you have to put yourself into a situation where you realize if they weren't giving him the five to 10 yard cushion right here, this play would be a whole lot more contested. But what I like to see, as I've already stated, is the fact that he's able to step right up and make an open field tackle. He didn't lose his guy there. Now, the only reason I show this play is because I want to show the, uh, the flawed part of his game that I was speaking of earlier and that being, you know, his size is definitely something to concern yourself over when it comes to can he match up well, you know, with offensive linemen. And obviously the answer to that is going to be no. Um, you know, he's going up against guys that are three to four inches taller and in some cases 40 pounds to 80 pounds to 90 pounds heavier than him. So it's always going to be a situation where he's going to have to use leverage to try to do things. And obviously on this particular play right here, the leverage was not in his favor. And you know, despite what I was just saying about his lack of size, watch the dog pop out of him. All right, he's right here. He's 47. Watch the dog pop out of him when this play starts off and starts to progress and Dak tries to come across that line of scrimmage. He fights through that offensive line and makes the tackle like i mean he, he's a scrappy little dude watch this play look at that he scraps right on through there and makes that tackle i like to see it but this was just a case where hudson made a hell of a play and then zeke cut it out and actually made a hell of a play to be able to do that now obviously he didn't gain anything on that because the guys on that edge were waiting for it so hudson actually blew the play up and caused it to happen that way i just love to see him look at that speed coming up the center of that gut like that I love to see that. I mean, yeah. Fights right through the block. Yeah. Balance was just a little bit off. This guy gets some experience under his belt. And he's going to be a little bit of a nightmare for wherever he ends up 
I mean, did you see that, that right there at the end of the play? There is a wide open area between him and Dak where a little bit of experience and he might close that gap and put a hit on Dak as Dak lets go of that ball. You see what I'm saying? Like, he barely missed it just then. I actually think Sweat puts a hand on that ball. But yeah, Hudson does everything he can to put his hands up and in Dak's face. This guy moves side to side with his hips at an elite level. Look at that. I mean, that was that was great. I absolutely love that. Why is it this is the first time we're seeing this guy on the field, man? This guy should have seen the field by now. Now, in this play right here, he comes around the edge and Dak steps up in the pocket and avoids him. But watch how close he gets. Actually, really close. Zeke did a pretty good job of, of, of kind of just barely pushing him off a little bit. But yeah, man, give this kid some experience. And I'm telling you, he's going to do some things. I'm not saying he's going to be the best it ever was, but look at this. This kid's got some skills, man. He should not be rotting away on the bench. That much is for certain. I mean, what the hell? Why are we not seeing more of this kid? Remember when I talked a little bit ago about the dog popping out of this kid when Dak went for it, like on, on, on short, you know, that little short yardage play? Here it is again. Another one. I mean, the dog pops out and he gets Dak again. You see that, y'all? Watch that again. I'm telling y'all, this kid's got dog in him. Look at that. Look at that. Fought right on through those offensive linemen. Like they weren't even there. And again, watch him shed the blocker right here and make this tackle. Look at that. I mean, look at that. That's that's not a play we normally see from a guy that we just saw start his first game in week 18, you know? A against a premier offense, I might add, and looking pretty damn good in the process. And once again, here's that dog. Pops right on out. Look at that. <laughs> Did y'all see that? He pushed Montez Sweat and the lineman over. I mean, I realized that it was about leverage, but look at that. Yeah, he just... <laughs> Again, fighting off of the block, making the tackle. I mean, what more can you ask for from a guy that stands six foot and, and weighs 220 pounds? What more could you ask for? Now, once they get their hands on him, you know, they might be able to manhandle him. But getting their hands on him is not an easy battle. And he makes a lot of tackles, man. I mean, sheds a block, makes a tackle. It seems like that's what he does 90% of the time when he's up, up against the run. Well, here's the play right here where, surprise, surprise, the refs missed the call. He got held on this play. If you watch the play progress, you'll see he was actually making a nice little move and got whipped around the neck there. That should have been a flag. You know, that point in the game, the, the, the game was kind of already decided, so it is what it is, but that's definitely not a legal move he put on him there. Um, definitely like a rip around the neck. At least a face mask. I have to say, I was highly impressed with the small amount of film that I was able to see on this kid in a starting situation. You know, I can't really look at special teams film and be able to grab anything from it and say, oh, well, you know, he could do this well and do that well because, you know, it doesn't really correlate to the actual plays. But after seeing that film, I have no doubt in my mind that I want that guy back. Now, I realize that he's a restricted free agent this year, which means we won't have to break the bank or anything just to bring him on back. And I'd like to see this guy get more shots out on the field, you know? I realize that Ron Rivera and company in their scheme you know, don't really use a whole lot of linebackers on the field at the same time. Normally, they don't use more than two. But if that guy is not an improvement over David Mayo, I don't know what exactly that we're looking for. I could still see the team needing to go after another linebacker maybe in the later rounds of the draft as well. But I think this kid, if given a chance, can solve a lot of issues that this team has, including being able to cover tight ends and being able to tackle in the open field. Not to mention the fact that this kid, if he learned some moves and got some more experience, could become a really good pass rusher as well. And before you try to dismiss this film or dismiss the fact that he only started one game, Remember that he started one game against a top five offense in the league and an offense that had been basically bullying a good portion of the league for a good portion of the season. 
At any rate, make sure to like this video and let me know down in the comments what you think about Khalid Hudson. Do you think this is a guy that Washington should invest more time and effort into teaching him? Or do you think this is a guy that maybe we should just let walk? Y'all take it easy. Peace.